सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट करिकुलम बेस्ड सीरीज ध्वनि शाला सो लेट्स ज्वाइन इन ध्वनि शाला क्लास एट हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर निधि सिंह एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट क्लास एट जोग्राफी टेक्स्ट बुक चैप्टर थ्री दैट इज मिनरल एंड पावर रिसोर्सेज डियर फ्रेंड्स इन द लास्ट चैप्टर वी गॉट टू नो अबाउट लैंड वॉटर सॉइल एटसेट्रा एज रिसोर्सेज नाउ वी विल गेट टू नो अबाउट द रॉक्स मिनरल्स एंड फ्यू अदर रिसोर्सेज Have you ever thought what are the rocks made up of? Have you ever noticed how the rocks look like? Are they of same color and hardness? No, right? So, why do they have different colors and have varying hardness etc? This is because they are made up of different minerals. So, minerals are the substances which make rocks. a mineral is naturally occurring substance that has a definite chemical composition minerals are not evenly distributed over space they are concentrated in a particular area or rock formations some minerals are found in areas which are not easily accessible such as the arctic ocean bed and antarctica Minerals are formed in different types of geological environments under varying conditions. They are created by natural processes without any human interference. They can be identified on the basis of their physical properties such as color, density, hardness and chemical properties such as solubility. Do you know the salt in your food no spin of your mother and graphite in your pencil are also minerals minerals make rocks a rock is an aggregate of one or more minerals but without definite composition of constituent of mineral did you know there are over 3000 different minerals on the basis of composition minerals are classified in various types and mainly into two types that are metallic and non-metallic minerals metallic minerals contain metal in raw form metals are hard substances that conduct heat and electricity and have a characteristic luster or shine iron ore bauxite manganese ore are some examples Metallic minerals may be ferrous or non-ferrous. Ferrous minerals like iron ore, manganese and chromites contain iron. A non-ferrous mineral does not contain iron but may contain some other metal such as gold, silver, copper or lead. On the other hand, non-metallic minerals do not contain metals. limestone mica and gypsum are examples of such minerals the mineral fuels like coal and petroleum are also non metallic minerals minerals can be extracted by mining drilling or quarrying have you ever visited a mine coal mine etc and seen how mining is done the process of taking out minerals from rocks buried under the earth surface is called mining minerals that lie at shallow depths are taken out by removing the surface layer this is known as open cast mining deep bores called shafts have to be made to reach mineral deposits that lie at great depths this is called shaft mining petroleum and natural gas occur far below the earth surface in this case deep wells are bored to take them out this is called drilling minerals that lie near the surface are simply dug out by the process known as quarrying let us now talk about distribution of minerals minerals occur in different types of rocks 
some are found in igneous rocks some in metamorphic rocks while others occur in sedimentary rocks generally metallic minerals are found in igneous and metamorphic rock formations that form large plateaus some of the other examples of minerals found in igneous and metamorphic rocks are iron ore in north sweden copper and nickel deposits in ontario canada iron nickel chromite and platinum in south africa sedimentary rock formations also contain minerals those found in plains and young fold mountains contain non metallic minerals like limestone limestone deposits of caucasus region of france manganese deposits of georgia and ukraine and phosphate beds of algeria are some examples mineral fuels such as coal and petroleum are also found in the sedimentary strata try finding out these regions of the world from your school atlas let us now try to understand the distribution of minerals all over the world by discussing about the continents one by one let us take asia at first china and india have large iron ore deposits the continent produces more than half of the world's tin china malaysia and indonesia are among the world's leading tin producers china also leads in production of lead antimony and tungsten asia also has deposits of manganese bauxite nickel zinc and copper Europe is the leading producer of iron ore in the world. The countries with large deposits of iron ore are Russia, Ukraine, Sweden, and France. Mineral deposits of copper, lead, zinc, manganese, and nickel are found in Eastern Europe and European Russia. The mineral deposits in North America are located in three zones. the canadian region north of the great lakes the appalachian region and the mountain ranges of the west iron ore nickel gold uranium and copper are mined in the canadian shield region coal in the appalachian region western cordilleras have vast deposits of copper lead zinc gold and silver In South America, Brazil is the largest producer of high grade iron ore in the world. Chile and Peru are leading producers of copper. Brazil and Bolivia are among the world's largest producers of tin. South America also has large deposits of gold, silver, zinc, chromium, manganese, bauxite and diamond etc. Mineral oil is found in Venezuela, Argentina, Chile, Peru and Colombia. Africa is rich in mineral resources. It is the world's largest producer of diamonds, gold and platinum. Did you know South Africa, Zimbabwe and Zaire produce a large portion of the world's gold? The other minerals found in Africa are copper, iron ore, chromium, uranium, cobalt and bauxite. Oil is found in Nigeria, Libya and Angola. Australia is the largest producer of bauxite in the world. It is a leading producer of gold, diamond, iron ore, tin and nickel. It is also rich in copper. lead zinc and manganese kalgoorlie and coolgardi areas of western australia have the largest deposits of gold let us also talk about antarctica another continent the geology of antarctica is sufficiently well known to predict the existence of a variety of mineral deposits some probably 
large since it is covered with thick cover of ice not much has been explored yet but significant size of deposits of coal and iron is forecasted iron ore gold silver and oil are also present in commercial quantities do you know minerals are of great importance to us minerals are used in many industries and act as resources minerals which are used for gems are usually hard these are then set in various styles of jewelry copper is another metal used in everything from coins to pipes silicon used in the computer industries obtained from quartz aluminum obtained from its ore bauxite is used in automobiles and airplanes bottling industry building and even in kitchen cookware so what do you think minerals are unlimited or can get exhausted minerals are a non renewable resource or they cannot be regenerated it takes thousands of years for the formation and concentration of minerals the rate of formation is much smaller than the rate at which the humans consume these minerals therefore it is necessary to conserve minerals conservation means using it judiciously only that amount which we require and not waste it can be done by reducing wastage in the process of mining recycling of metals is another way in which the mineral resources can be conserved after mineral resources let us talk about power resources the way we need power to run our body and carry out various functions of our body we need power to run various gadgets and machines etc power or energy plays a vital role in our lives we also need power for industry agriculture transport communication and defense power resources may be broadly categorized as conventional and non conventional resources the conventional sources of power are firewood and coal and thermal power generated from coal coal is the most abundantly found fossil fuel it is used as a domestic fuel in industries such as iron and steel steam engines and to generate electricity did you know the coal which we are using today was formed millions of years ago when giant ferns and swamps got buried under the layers of the earth the leading coal producers of the world are china usa germany russia south africa and france the coal producing areas of india are raniganj jharia dhanbad and bukaro in jharkhand petroleum another fossil fuel is found between the layers of rocks and is drilled from oil fields located in offshore and coastal areas this is then sent to refineries which process the crude oil and produce a variety of products like diesel petrol kerosene wax plastics and lubricants the chief petroleum producing countries are iran iraq saudi arabia and qatar the other major producers are usa russia venezuela and algeria do you know in which parts of india petroleum is found the leading producer in india are digboy in assam bombay high in mumbai and the deltas of krishna and godavari rivers natural gas is found with 
petroleum deposits and is released when crude oil is brought to the surface. It can be used as a domestic and industrial fuel. Russia, Norway, UK and the Netherlands are the major producers of natural gas. In India, Jaisalmer, Krishna Godavari Delta, Tripura and some areas of offshore in Mumbai have natural gas resources. Very few countries in the world have sufficient natural gas reserves of their own. Another source of power is the hydel power. Rainwater or river water stored in dams is made to fall from heights. The falling water flows through pipes inside the dam over turbine blades placed at the bottom of the dam. The moving blades then turn the generator to produce electricity. This is called hydroelectricity which is then used for various purposes. The leading producers of hydel power in the world are Paraguay, Norway, Brazil and China. Can you name some important hydel power stations in India? They are Bhakra Nangar, Gandhi Sagar, Nagarjun Sagar and Damodar Valley projects. Friends, what has happened is that the sharp increase in our consumption of fossil fuels has led to their depletion at an alarming rate. The toxic pollutants released from burning these fuels are also a cause of concern. Therefore, non-conventional sources of energy are also being used now. This means using non-conventional sources such as solar energy, wind energy, tidal energy, which are renewable. Sun's heat and light energy can be felt by us every day. Solar energy trapped from the sun can be used in solar cells to produce electricity. Many of these cells are joined into solar panels to generate power for heating and lighting purpose. The technology of utilizing solar energy benefits a lot of tropical countries that are blessed with abundant sunshine. Solar energy is also used in solar heaters, solar cookers, solar dryers besides being used for community lighting and traffic signals. Wind is another inexhaustible source of energy. Windmills have been used for grinding grain and lifting water since times immemorial. In modern time, windmills, the high speed winds rotate the windmill which is connected to a generator to produce electricity. Wind farms are found in Netherlands, Germany, Denmark, UK, USA and Spain are noted for their wind energy production. In India, wind energy is being generated in coastal areas. Find out why wind energy is being generated in coastal areas. Nuclear power, another inexhaustible source of energy, is obtained from energy stored in the nuclei of atoms of naturally occurring radioactive elements like uranium and thorium. These fuels undergo nuclear fission in nuclear reactors and emit power. The greatest producers of nuclear power are USA and Europe. In India, nuclear power stations are located in Kalpakkam in Tamil Nadu, Tarapur in Maharashtra, Rana Pratap Sagar near Kota in Rajasthan, Narora in Uttar Pradesh and Kaiga in Karnataka. Now, we will talk about geothermal energy. Heat energy obtained from the earth is called geothermal energy. The heat present inside the earth is used to generate energy. Geothermal energy in the form of hot springs 
has been used for cooking, heating and bathing for several years. USA has the world's largest geothermal power plants followed by New Zealand, Iceland, Philippines and Central America. In India also geothermal plants are located in Manikaran in Himachal Pradesh and Puga Valley in Ladakh. Have you ever visited any of these places? I have been to Manikaran and have seen the hot springs. Energy generated from tides is called tidal energy which is another form of renewable energy. Tidal energy can be harnessed by building dams at narrow openings of the sea. During high tide the energy of the tides is used to turn the turbine installed in the dam to produce electricity. Russia, France and even the Gulf of Kutch in India have huge tidal mill farms. Try locating Gulf of Kutch in your school atlas. Organic waste such as dead plant and animal material, animal dung and kitchen waste can also act as non-conventional source of energy. It can be converted into gaseous fuel called biogas. Have you ever heard of this type of fuel? The organic waste is decomposed by bacteria in biogas digesters to emit biogas which is essentially a mixture of methane and carbon dioxide. Did you know biogas is an excellent fuel for cooking and lighting and produces huge amount of organic manure each year. So friends now you understand that lots of mineral and energy resources are present around us but sometimes they are available in limited quantity or have limited accessibility or are costly to harness. In any case, we need to use these resources judiciously. This means we should use only the amount we actually require and not waste them. Let us recapitulate what we learned today. We learned about first minerals as resources, then distribution of minerals, then power resources and its types that is conventional and non-conventional resources and lastly conservation of resources. In order to understand this topic in a much better manner, let us solve few questions. Choose the correct answer. Which one of the statements is not a characteristic of minerals? You have to choose between the options that I'll be giving you. First is, they are created by natural processes. Second, they have a definite chemical composition. Third, they are inexhaustible. And fourth, their distribution is uneven. Remember, you have to choose which is not a characteristic of minerals. Another question, which one is a leading producer of copper in the world? Just recall what we learned today. First is Bolivia, second is Ghana, third is Chile and fourth is Zimbabwe. Another question. Let us try to distinguish between the two terminologies. First is conventional and non-conventional sources of energy. Second is biogas and natural gas. So you have to distinguish between biogas and natural gas. Similarly, third is ferrous and non-ferrous minerals. Fourth is metallic and non-metallic minerals. You can also do some activity. Use picture from old magazines to show different kinds of fuels used by us in our lives and display them on your bulletin board or in your room, the wall of your room, etc. Friends, hope you have understood about the mineral and power resources well. In the next session, we will come up with some other topic. Till then, 
बाय एंड टेक केयर फ्रेंड्स यू आर जस्ट लिसनिंग टू द सीरीज ध्वनि शाला रिकॉर्डेड बाय बटी लैंग लिंगडो एंड विकास सांगवान प्रोड्यूस्ड बाय मीनाक्षी कुकरेती एंड दिस प्रोग्राम इज ब्रॉट टू यू बाय सी आई ई टी एन सी ए आर टी न्यू डेली इंडिया